Hello everyone and welcome back. In the last lesson we learned how to pass input data to a custom component using the square brackets template syntax and the input annotation here at the level of the component class. In this lesson we are going to see how can we make a component such as the course card to emit custom events that can be handled here at the level of the parent component. Let's give an example of a custom event. We would like to go here to our course card component and we would like to add here a button. When this button is pushed, the user is going to view the course. So it's going to be redirected to a new page that is going to display the course that corresponds to the card. So if we hit command S, we are going to see that now on each course card, we have here a new view course button. As we have seen before, we can add here to this button a click handler using the following syntax. We are going to add here between round braces, the browser event that we want to handle and here on the right hand side, we need to provide an expression that is typically a function call. So I'm going to add here a new method on course viewed. And this method needs to be part of the course card component. So we're going to add here a new method that is going to be called in response to this click. In order to confirm that this click handler is working correctly, let's add here some logging and try this out. If we now open here the console in the Chrome DevTools, we are going to see that whenever we click here on the view course button, we are going to get here the logging statement as expected. So this will happen independently of the card that we click. Notice that the template syntax that we are using here for adding a click event handler, it's just another way of adding a stand standard browser event listener. This works as a standard browser event, which means that the click event will bubble to outside the component itself, to outside the course card. So this means that if we go here to our application component and we add here a click handler at level of the course card itself, by using the same syntax, we are going to see that this event handler is going to be triggered as expected. Let's try this out. We are going to add here a click handler handler called on card clicked and this function is going to exist here at the level of the application component to this event handler function we're going to be adding here a new logging statement so what is going to happen here is that when we click here on the view course button this event handler here at the level of the course card component is going to get triggered this logging statement is going to be issued to the console and then the browser click event is going to bubble up is going to be caught here at the level of this click handler and then this function is going to get triggered. Let's try this out. Let's open the console and see what happens whenever we click on view course. So as you can see, we have here the click handler that was triggered at the level of the card component, followed by the click handler at the level of the application component. Using the same syntax that we have used to handle here a normal browser event, such as a click event, we can also handle custom events. Let's say that instead of responding here to the click event that gets bubbled up from the view course button, we would like to respond here to a course selected custom event. So this is not a standard browser event. Let's rename here our function in order to reflect the fact that this is a custom browser event. This is going to be called the on course selected method. Let's then go back to our application component and rename the event handling method. At the level of our course card component, what we want to do now is to emit the custom event. In order to do that, we're going to need here a custom event emitter. So let's instantiate it using the event emitter class from Angular Core. To our event emitter, we can pass an optional type parameter that is going to define what type of values are getting emitted. In this case, we want to emit an instance of course. So we can use this course selected emitter to emit here a custom value. And here we can pass in the value of the course that got selected. We can access this using this.course. 
With this new implementation, whenever we click here on the view course button, we are then going to be meeting here a custom event that is going to pass in the selected course as a payload and that will be caught here at the level of the parent component using this event handler. We can now retrieve the value that was emitted by the event emitter using the special dollar event variable. This means that here on the on course selected method, we can now add here a new parameter, which is the value that got emitted by the event emitter. In this case, the course. In order to confirm that we are indeed receiving here the course, let's log it out to the console. Now, if we would try this program as it is, we might be surprised to see that on course selected is not getting triggered. And this is because here in our course card component, we did not mark this event emitter as being an output of the component. So in order for our example to work, we need to add here the output decorator from Angular Core in order to mark this event emitter as an output of this component. If we don't add this here, then the example would not work. With this in place, let's now try out our example. As we can see, we have added here our custom event handler only at the first card of our list. Let's have a look at what we have then in the console. If we click here on the first course, we are going to see that we have here indeed the first logging statement, then here at the level of the course card component, and we have here a second logging statement that was done at the level of the application component. So our event emitter triggered here a custom event that was caught here and on course selected was triggered and the course was indeed printed out to the console as expected. Now, if we click here on another course, let's say, for example, the last in the list, we are going to see that nothing happens other than we can see here the logging at the level of the course card component where the button click handler was triggered, but no custom event was received here at the level of the application component. And this is because we only added here an event handler to the first card of our list. So if we add here similar event handlers to the other cards, we are going to see that any card will be printed out to the console. Let's then try this out. If we try this new version of the program, we see here that the first card was printed out here to the screen. But if we now click here on the second and on the third courses, we are going to see that the correct data is being logged as expected. So as you can see, the template mechanism for handling custom events in Angular looks exactly the same as the one for handling native browser events. So handling here the native click button looks exactly the same as handling here a custom event. There is one important difference though, is that these type of events, they do not bubble up the component hierarchy. So the click event that was emitted here did bubble up from the course card component up until here our application component. This is just the standard browser mechanism. It's not Angular doing the bubbling of the event, but this custom event, unlike the native event, will not bubble up. Also notice that the name of our custom event is exactly the same as the name here of our event emitter. This is because Angular takes the name of the event from the name of the emitter if nothing else gets specified. Let's say that we would now rename this variable to course emitter. So if we would do so, then our example would no longer work because here in the template we are expecting an output event named course selector and there isn't here an emitter named like that. So if we want to define here at the level of the output decorator a different name for the custom event other than the name that we have here for the event emitter, we can use here this string parameter. So if we now specify here a value, then this is going to be the name of the custom event linked to this emitter. So if we now retry our application, we are going to see that everything is still working as expected. So if we head over here to the console and we hit here, for example, the second card of the list, we are going to see that our custom event is still being triggered. And with this, we have covered the Angular component inputs and outputs. What we're going to do next is we're going to start covering several of the core directives of Angular. 
Let's start with the most commonly used NG4 and NGIF.